Hey guys, Brad here from Scooter Street. Look, okay, we've got a bit of rubbish weather here today, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a demonstrational video. We haven't done one in a while. So, look, we're commonly getting questions about transmission tuning, especially on 50cc two-strokes. Now, if you've been around scooters for a little while, you've uh, tried your hand at tuning a couple, you would know that the transmission tuning is so imperative uh, to the performance of the bike. You can uh, put all the right parts on, and if your transmission isn't tuned correctly, you lose all the gains. In fact, you can even make it worse. So we have our little 50cc zip in the shop today. I'm going to show you how to pull your transmission apart, install a bunch of uh, performance goodies such as a new variator, uh, performance belt, and we're going to pull apart the torque driver and show you how you can, with the factory torque driver and clutch, uh, you can disassemble that assembly and uh, replace it with the parts that you need to replace to get the best performance out of your scooter. It's going to be really useful for you if you're looking at installing some performance parts on your bike and you want to bring the transmission up to spec because uh, as I mentioned uh, you can lose all of your gains in the transmission if it's not done properly. So I'm going to get into this scooter over here and uh, we're going to start pulling it apart and uh, we can get into it. Okay here we've got our zip. So first things first we've got to get this transmission cover off. Now on the zip again like with most scooters the airbox has to come off uh, or at least pop up out of the way. And uh, one of the slightly frustrating things with the zip is the floor panel and the belly pan are both in the way of some of those bolts. So there is a little trick I'll show you where you can sort of flex these out of the way without having to remove them. But uh, we'll, uh, I'll get into ripping these bolts out and, and we'll see how it comes apart. Okay, so now that we've got all our bolts out, we can uh, pop the transmission cover off. It's got a little trick this to rag around that, just especially on a black bike, stops you from scratching your paint. Now, depending on how long it was since the transmission cover came off last, they can often be a little bit jammed. So what you can do, use your uh, your, your kickstart, and that should help you pry it free a little bit. being a little bit stubborn. There we go. Now when you do this, just want to be careful because that little uh, uh, kickstart grabber, a little kickstart pinion that actually jumps out and grabs onto the teeth on the inside here for your kickstart to actuate. So when you do that, it's, uh, it's not uncommon for these to pop out. So it's uh, simply just a matter of setting it back in place to start watch that it doesn't fall down and you lose it because if you forget to put that back in it will not kick start. Okay so now that we're inside our transmission you can start to get a better idea of what's going on. So one thing I will recommend, it's not a terrible idea, 
if you can maneuver it out just to get that pinion gear out of the way. No, nah, she's going to get stuck behind the variator. There it goes. Get that one out of the way because it probably will fall out. And if it falls out, you don't see it happen, you may forget to put it back in, which means you're going to have to pull everything back apart again to get the bike started. So, obviously our front pulley here and rear pulley here. Now the clutch, this is a clutch bell here. The actual clutch shoe itself is housed inside there. And uh, obviously behind there we have our rear pulley, um, also called a torque driver. And that's the rear part of the pulley system. That's uh, the opposite part of the front here, which is the variator. So there's a couple of ways to get these nuts off. Um, we do sell a transmission tool, this one here, if you don't have uh, a, uh, an impact driver. And the way these work, they, um, they line up to a couple of the bolts uh, on the casing. And these teeth here are designed to lock into the teeth of the, um, the outer pulley. Uh, just to stop it from moving. The best option, it's one I'd recommend, if you don't have an air compressor, you can get uh, a lot of brands have these um, uh, relatively cheap, uh, pretty powerful impact drivers nowadays. One of those and a 15mm socket will make your life a lot easier. If so, it's obviously what we use in the shop. Now the front and the rear nuts are usually identical. These look like they've been replaced at some stage, but uh, it is the same size nut and thread on front and rear. Now that the nuts are both off, I'd normally start with the variator. So you're gonna try and pull this whole assembly off. I usually have my, uh, my thumb over this little washer on the inside here, grab around behind it, and try and pull the whole thing off as an assembly. Now it does have teeth inside it, so you will just need to give it a little wiggle. But if you can keep that assembly all together, it's, uh, it's much easier when you're reassembling the bike. Now, with getting the belt off, uh, generally it's a lot easier if you squeeze the torque driver at the back so that the belt goes into a torque driver. So basically that's this, this outer face of the torque driver here. You're just going to try and pull it closer to the clutch bell. Uh, it'll want to twist clockwise as you do it. And as you do that with these, this hand here, just push the belt in and you'll, what you can see has happened. As soon as I do that, the belt goes in, it gets stuck. Now we've got plenty of slack here. So we can pull this off. No dramas at all. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the variator. Now, obviously you have your ramp plate at the back, all the rollers and stuff in there, and I'd rather not make a big mess with rollers flying everywhere. So you want to try and get your finger around it, feel that ramp plate, and then jiggle it out so that it all comes out together, rather than the, uh, the face of the little basket coming out separate from the plate, and our rollers and guides just falling all over the place. So now we've got all of this out, I'm going to sit it down on the bench, and... Uh, we can have a look and work out what it is that we're going to replace. Now while I'm in here, I thought it'd be a good idea to mention, this here obviously being a Piaggio Hyper 2 is the oil pump. The oil pump on these is an inboard oil pump, it sits at the bottom of the transmission. Now um, you'll see this little belt here, if I pop the washer out of the way, a little gear that drives directly off the crankshaft, it drives this belt, it comes down to another gear down behind the oil pump. Now this is the oil pump gear. That gear is directly connected to the inside of the pump, and uh, as the crank spins, it spins this gear, which pumps your oil. Oil in, oil out. And uh, obviously a throttle cable here so that um, they have a split type cable. So as you throttle the bike, it increases the amount of oil pumping, which is a really clever idea. Now, you'll see the condition of this oil pump compared to the rest of the transmission casing. It's really beautiful and clean, which makes, uh, makes it excellent for the point I'm about to make, which is these oil pumps do commonly leak. So if you have a Piaggio and uh, you're at this point, you've pulled the transmission cover off and you notice uh, the presence of a fair bit of oil down here, this is uh, probably what uh, what's happening on your scooter. Your oil pump has started to fail and it's leaking. So not a big deal. These pumps aren't particularly expensive and they're pretty easy to replace. So um, definitely something worth checking out, you know, having a proper look in here while you've got the cover off. Because um, if, you, if your oil pump is leaking, it will eventually fail and uh, you're going to and you're going to seize your engine. So it's much cheaper to replace the oil pump uh, as a preventative thing. It's starting to leak. All right, I'll replace it before the issue gets too bad and you end up costing yourself a new piston instead. We have our transmission here as it would have come off the bike. So obviously out of fan or fan pulley. Now a good thing to do with the Piaggio because it has this plastic, plastic fan, just generally can, uh, check the condition of it. What can happen on these, uh, where the um, uh, this little drive here locks into the fan, I'm not sure if you can see that. It locks in. Now what can sometimes happen is if the, uh, the variator has been installed incorrectly before and someone's not sat it in the correct place, it uh, presses marks uh, as the nut's done up. 
into the fan and eventually damages it. And uh, or even just through normal wear, it become it can become quite loose. So that there is probably within the acceptable level. It's still relatively nice and tight, but um, a good thing to check because when these do become loose, all they have to do is slip a little bit, and due to the speed and revs of the engine as that's rotating around, the fan will blow apart. And I have seen before one of these plastic fans blow apart, and then it takes the belt with it. So you just you know destroyed a hundred dollar belt for the sake of a fifteen dollar plastic fan. So a good thing to check. A lot of transmission uh, transmission servicing is just preventative, changing parts before they completely die, because often uh, with something like this, you know, this bike is doing nine, ten thousand RPM regularly, which means that uh, these parts are spinning many of them at you know ten thousand RPM, so it's something like three hundred times a second. It's very, very fast. So that um, uh, they're going to wear and tear, and they're going to wear out over time. And if you wait until something breaks you're going to get a big breakage just uh, just due to the speed uh, associated with the, with these parts. Now this here, this is the factory one, you generally don't replace these. Uh, I don't think that I've ever seen one of these break. Um, I haven't even seen the, the teeth stripped off one. Uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but this is not something that you generally replace unless you're doing some really, really high-end uh, high uh, performance tuning. Got a variator here, so the shaft, then uh, the ramp plate at the back. Now these are your guides. These are another part that has to be periodically replaced because um, the job of these is to uh, sit between uh, the, the ramp and the basket so that it's not metal on metal. Now, every time you ride your scooter, the ramp's going in and out, in and out, and this is how it changes its gearing. So those guides you see, they're sliding all the time, and they're doing 10,000 RPM just like everything else in here. So they're going to wear over time. Uh, usually, I think about 10,000 Ks is when you would normally change your guides, but at the same time as the belt and same time as the rollers, which is out these suckers here. So these are the factory ones. Uh, the factory ones are usually pink, it's how I can tell they're factory straight away. Now these are normally about seven and a half gram. Uh, so if you're gonna be doing some performance tuning, one of the first things you're gonna, gonna wanna do, particularly if you've put a performance exhaust on the bike, is you're gonna wanna make the weight of these lighter. Now the reason for that, <clears throat> a performance exhaust changes how much power a bike makes, but also changes where it makes it. So instead of making power at, uh, say, two and a half thousand um, RPM, you take off at the lights, you give the you give the throttle a twist, the bike takes off, revs up to about two and a half thousand RPM, the clutch engages, and you've got power there because uh, the bike's in the correct gearing. Now you go and put a performance exhaust on. Maybe the bike's not making power till three and a half, four thousand RPM now, but it still engages at two and a half. So it's sort of like in a manual car trying to take off in third gear. It's, uh, it's not going to be able to rev up enough to, to get to a point where it's actually making some power. So it's gonna, uh, you're going to experience quite a lot of bogginess, uh, and then maybe the bike will travel to the 20 or 30 metres, and then it'll seem to suddenly pick up in power because it's gotten up to that correct rev range. So the way to alleviate this issue is to make the rollers lighter. Now what that's going to do is it's going to keep the gearing back uh, and allow the, uh, the, the bike to rev at the start, uh, and um, if you get that if you get that ratio right, you'll get the best uh, uh, bottom end acceleration, and you won't lose any top end. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm going to get to our belt. Now, again, one of the things you're, you're going to want to do if you're not changing the belt, if you're changing the belt, doesn't matter. But if you're not changing the belt, something that you're going to want to do is check the belt. And the way this is done, you turn the belt inside out. You want to check the inside for cracks. Now, what'll happen is they start to wear. They will develop small cracks on the inside of the belt. Now on the Piaggio, uh, the serviceability on these is about every 10,000. Yeah, you're due to change the belt, but um, I, you know, certainly have seen them fail before 10,000. Uh, so it is a good idea if you're in here just to check everything, because if you blow a belt apart, it can be a bit of a pain to, to clean apart, because um, when it comes apart, all of the fibrous material inside here will, will blow apart. Looks a little bit like an exploded cat has gone off on the inside of your, um, of your transmission and um, uh, it's going to leave you stranded somewhere too, which is going to be highly inconvenient. We'll mention as well, uh, this one here being one of the Chinese zips, comes with one of the Gates belts. Uh, now the original belts in the zips uh, and all the Piaggio, the Piaggio Hyper 2 engines was a Deco belt, and it was a higher quality belt. These belts are okay, but uh, they're just of a Chinese manufacturer, so um, if you're going to be replacing your factory belt, if you can get a Deco belt, uh, or even a Molossi belt, it's even better. Um, it, you know, just steering clear of these gates belts, if you can, is, uh, is never a bad thing. Okay, so this here, which makes up our, our rear pulley, obviously made up of the, um, 
of the clutch bell here. You're not going to be really doing a lot of clutch bell tuning unless you're doing some really high-end tuning. Just going to put that one to the side. So this here, this assembly is what we're going to be working on. So this is your rear pulley or your torque driver and then uh, your clutch shoe. Now between these two is uh, the torque or the contra spring, depending on uh, which terminology you're familiar with. Now that's uh, the spring, uh, the contra spring and the clutch springs on the inside of a clutch shoe, which you can't really see here, that's what we're going to be mainly doing tuning on. You can't do any of that without getting this 34mm nut off. Now this is another case of <clears throat> we do have a variator tool which will allow you to get this nut off. It's difficult. It's much easier to do it with a socket and, uh, and a, a, a torque driver. So um, again, another instance where picking up a cheap um, $150 or $200 um, a hardware store, uh, you know, half inch drive torque driver is going to make a really big difference in terms of uh, how easy it is to work on your scooter. Now, one other thing I'll mention when you pop this off, that nut is the only thing holding the clutch in place. As soon as you do that, that spring in there, when it's out, is about this long. So, the first thing that's going to want to happen when you take that nut off, the clutch is going to want to launch up in the air and hit you in the face. So, it's a good idea what we often do. We'll have it sitting on the ground on a rag so it doesn't damage the back of the torque driver and we'll either uh, have one person have their hands on it while another undoes the nut, or more commonly we'll stick out the, the fronts of our feet over the top of it, just so that when that nut does release, it doesn't want to spring the clutch up in the air and, uh, and, and hurt you. Okay, so nut off, we're going to have a better look. You'll see how much that's wanted to come up. So uh, yeah, very good idea to try and keep that secure. Okay, so we've got our three clutch springs here, and then we have our contra spring in behind it. Now you've probably seen these contra springs before and you've probably seen the clutch springs and wondered where they all go and because they do sit so close together it sometimes can be a little bit confusing but essentially the way the clutch on these works these shoes three of them uh, they sit on a pivot on one side so as it spins up the centrifugal force forces the shoe to uh, stretch the spring to move outwards from that pivot and as it does that it engages with the inside of the bell and makes the bike move. So what we're doing by changing these uh, these springs is you put stiffer springs in there. Uh, it requires more centrifugal force for the spring to open up and grab. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to have to rev the engine more for the clutch to engage on the inside of the clutch belt. Now as I mentioned earlier with the rollers, say you've put a performance uh, exhaust on your scooter. So instead of making power at 2,500 RPM, maybe it's making power at 3,500 or 4,000 RPM. You want the clutch to engage when the engine is making power. So if you've put an exhaust on with factory clutch springs still in the clutch, the clutch is going to engage before the engine uh, is making uh, a significant amount of power. Basically, it's going to engage and bog the engine down and not allow it to rev up to where it needs to get to uh, actually get you moving at a decent pace. So changing these uh, clutch springs, if you're putting a performance exhaust on a bike, is an absolute must if you're wanting to get the most out of it. Uh, in many cases, putting a performance exhaust on without changing the springs will actually decrease your initial acceleration. The bike will be slower until you get to 10, 15 k's an hour uh, when, uh, when the bike's actually had enough of a chance to rev up and then it will suddenly take off. So uh, definitely not what you want because uh, with scooters, uh, it's because you have a limited range, you know, say up to 60, 80 k's an hour, um, you want to be able to get there quickly. And that's, uh, that's what um, changing these clutch springs is all about. Now with the contra spring, <clears throat> uh, if the roller's job is to uh, increase the gearing ratio so that the bike goes faster, the contra spring's job is to do the opposite. So when you back off the throttle and you're slowing down, say you're doing 60 kilometres an hour, you slow down. Well, if you're in a car, if, whether it's an auto or a manual, the gears need to come back down to a lower gearing ratio as well so that uh, when you want to accelerate again, you're in the correct gearing ratio for the speed that you're doing. So the contra spring does that job automatically. So what it does when you back off the throttle, the contra spring is constantly pushing, trying to push the belt, see it opens up, constantly trying to push those two faces together. Now if the two faces push together, that pushes the belt up to the top of this pulley. Now the belt's a fixed length, so if it moves to the top of this pulley, it means that it has to move to the bottom of the front pulley. So basically, if the belt's at the top of the front pulley and in the bottom of the rear pulley, that's when you're doing your top speed. 
when the belt is in the bottom of the front pulley and all the way in the top of the rear pulley, that's your lowest gear. That, that's your takeoff gear if your transmission is tuned correctly. So the Contra Spring's job is to make sure that when you're decelerating, the transmission uh, reverses what it's just done to allow you to then accelerate. So you come around a corner, you've reduced your speed by 20 kilometers per hour, you get back on the throttle, you wanna know that the bike's in the correct gearing and that it will take off again under power and that it's not gonna be bogged down by being in too high of a gearing ratio. So that's what the Contra Spring does. And that's why you'll find almost all Variator kits will come with a Contra Spring as part of the kit to uh, assist the bike in not just acceleration, but in uh, post-deceleration acceleration, if that makes sense. You've slowed down, you wanna go again, you haven't come to a complete stop, but you wanna pull away again, that's what the Contra Spring will help you with. Now, all of this is a delicate balance. If your Contra Spring is too stiff and your rollers are too light, uh, then uh, it, the bike's going to rev and go nowhere. If the Contra Spring is too soft and your rollers are too heavy, the bike's gonna go nowhere very quickly. It's gonna bog down. And uh, in between that <clears throat> is where your correct transmission tuning is. So that's why we, we recommend uh, uh, getting a, a full variator kit. Say so for instance, the Molossi is a great kit because it comes with everything set up pretty much ready to go. The Contra Spring will work, one Contra Spring will work for a fairly wide variation of rollers. Um, it's really only high-end tuning that you're going to be wanting to do a lot of contra spring changes um, for really high revving bikes. I'm going to go and grab this um, Lossy Variator kit and um, we're going to look at uh, uh, installing some of those parts. And I'm going to grab a new clutch as well. Instead of changing the springs, we're going to put a, a brand new clutch in this one and um, I'll show you how to adjust that. So we're going to put a, a brand new Molossi var Variator in this one. This is the packet. It's a 519019 kit. This is just the standard Multivar 2000 kit from Molossi. Now one of the things that this kit comes with is a brand new Contra spring. Now the springs may look very similar and they can even be similar in stiffness, but one of the big differences with performance springs is how progressive they are. Now the best way to describe this is uh, if you were to, um, uh, to put some sort of mechanism uh, on this spring that would tell you how many uh, kilos or pounds of force it's applying. Uh, so at, uh, at no level of, uh, of tension it's supplying nothing, so then at 80% at 50% and then at 20%, uh, it, it will supply a certain amount of tension. Uh, now compared to the Molossi spring, the Molossi spring is more progressive. So the way I describe this is the Molossi spring, the more you squeeze it, it progressively adds more and more and more tension. Now it gets, you know, it's quite hard to squeeze here. It's quite easy to squeeze at the end. Compared to the Piaggio spring, which is quite hard to squeeze at the start, and then the closer you get, that doesn't really change. It's pretty much the same amount of tension from here as it is to here. So the velocity spring is gonna act more efficiently because the more it's squeezed, um, the more tension it adds compared to an inefficient spring, which pretty much has uh, all of its tension in the first half, and then the second half of it's being squeezed, it's not really doing anything at all. So the velocity is going to be a more progressive spring and uh, therefore more efficient for what we're using it for in a CVT. So we're going to go ahead and pop that one there. Always a good thing to do is to move the plastic ring over. Stops it from winding up. Now in this one we're going to put one of these uh, brand new um, Fleeny G3 clutches. Now these are a really great clutch because they have a high level of adjustability. So instead of just changing the springs, the spring cradle where it sits on uh, onto the spring catch is uh, actually attached to a small screw and so you can dial the screw in by doing it up you're stretching the spring which is going to add more tension to the clutch so if you want to delay your clutch engagement a little bit further you want to allow the bike to rev more before the clutch engages you can adjust each three of these screws and they actually have quite a neat little uh, little dial there so you can try and really dial it and get it quite even between the three because it's quite important you want them three of them to evenly throw out and engage to the clutch bell. But you can uh, do these uh, screws up uh, and delay your engagement without having to change the springs. Very, very clever idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and chuck that one in. You can use the same process. I'm gonna chuck this in uh, off camera with the torque driver and uh, then we'll uh, look at uh, probably putting the rest of the transmission together. So now that we've got our rear pulley sorted, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one to the side and we're gonna concentrate on our belt and variator. So this is the belt we're going to put on this one. This is the uh, Molossi Special X. 
Now, Milosi make a couple of different belts for the factory transmission. Uh, they have the uh, the XK and the Special X. Now, the big difference between them, and the reason we recommend the Special X for uh, for most scooters, this uh, yellow band here is Kevlar. Now, the Kevlar is there to strengthen the belt. You'll notice that even the factory belt uh, has some banding in it. Obviously, compared to the Milosi, uh, there's uh, significantly more banding in, in, the, in the Milosi. So it's a much stronger belt. It's going to handle a bit more power, and it should last a bit longer too. Now, the difference between the Special X and the XK, the XK is Milosi's Kevlar belt. Now, they both have Kevlar in them, so it's a bit, a bit of a, a sort of a trick name. The difference in them is the Kevlar banding in the Kevlar belt is much thicker, so it's much stronger. But uh, the thicker that you make the banding, the more stiff the belt becomes. Now, uh, when the belt's working, it has to come all the way down and wrap right around the variator shaft uh, and then be up in the top of the rear to get its lowest gearing. Now, if the belt's really stiff, it doesn't want to wrap around very nice. It doesn't want to really hug down in there because the further it hugs down on the shaft, the higher it can get on the rear and the lower gearing you can get. Because the Kevlar belt's so stiff, unless the bike has a lot of power to really rip it down into the, the right down on the shaft, for a lower powered scooter, it'll tend to uh, not want to bend much because it's too stiff. So it'll sort of sit more like that, which means it'll have the result of uh, the back of the belt not being able to get all the way up in the torque driver. So it's kind of like um, uh, if you lose first gear in a car uh, or, or a motorcycle, you've lost that lowest gearing and uh, the Kevlar belt often has this effect on, uh, on lower powered uh, tuned scooters where you just lose that little bit off the mark. Uh, because the belt's so stiff, the bike just doesn't have the power to overcome how stiff the belt is um, to get it right down into that lowest gear. That's why we usually preface these uh, these special belts, because they're very similar in stiffness to a factory belt, but they're a lot stronger. So, And at the value for money, they're really not much more expensive than a factory belt. <coughs> they really are a great unit. So now we come to our Molossi variator. Now, as with every single time we've mentioned one of these Piaggio variators, they come with two rings. One's metal, one's plastic. The plastic one goes straight in the bin. It's purely there for homologation purposes because like in many countries, 50cc scooters are supposed to have a speed restriction. Molossi want to sell their parts, so they include the speed restrictor in there to be technically legal. Now, Australia's not one of those countries. So, we've got here our six rollers. Now, as I mentioned, the factory ones are 7.5. The ones that come in this Molossi kit are 7.2. You may think to yourself, wow, that's not much of a difference. But you need to remember, we've also put the Molossi Contra spring in the rear. So we would always recommend, no matter what, uh, unless you've you know got a high-end 70 kit in the bike already, uh, we'd always recommend that you start with the factory uh, Multivar 2000 setup and then uh, adjust your roller weights from there. You'll probably find nine times out of ten, if you've got a decent performance exhaust uh, on the bike, you probably need to go a bit lighter. Um, and if you have a 70cc cylinder kit installed, you'll definitely need to go lighter. But still not a bad idea just to start with whatever Milosi supply in the kit. So same sort of thing, basket, shaft, and ramp plate. Now, if we compare that to our factory, one of the big improvements you'll notice that Milosi have made with this variator, if we put our factory guide in there, then we put the Milosi guide, there's a huge difference in the size and toughness of those guides. The Molossi is thicker, uh, it's larger, and the actual slide uh, is significantly deeper as well. So the idea of that is to reduce uh, the, the amount of friction on each part of it. Obviously, if you spread the same amount of friction over a larger area, it's gonna be uh, less friction over that surface area. So it's gonna have less uh, less resistance of the variator and the basket wanting to, uh, the, sorry, the ramp plate and the basket wanting to move. It's going to have less resistance to want to change gearing, which is definitely a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these in. They are directional. You'll notice that there's a V shape pressed into the ramp plate. So obviously don't put it on that way. You put the V where the V is. With our rollers, we're going to go ahead and pop those in as well. These are technically directional, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. The general rule I've always used depends on the roller, but with the Molossi rollers is a uh, 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 holding the ramp uh, with the the basket going clockwise against you. Just um, have the writing facing you as it goes around. I've never seen a roller come apart, but um, it's just one of those habits I've always gotten into. 
I'm going to go ahead and pop the ramp plate in. It's all sitting. It's nice and free, so that means all the guides are definitely in there properly. Flick it around. Pop our shaft in. Now, on some of the bigger scooters, uh, and some of the higher end Molossi kits, the MHR Variator kit, <clears throat> there's a rubber seal inside here, and the shaft actually has uh, small holes in it, um, with some of them even have some grooves in them. Now, uh, this is a this particular kit is a non-lubricated kit. You do not need lube anywhere in or near this kit. That's why it has steel and it has the uh, with the brass um, the brass insert so that it can slide in and out of itself and move. Do not put lubricant in this kit. There are some other kits that are required to put lubricant in the kit uh, because they have the um, the seal to stop the lubricant from spreading into the transmission. They usually have a seal on the front and the back of the basket. This is not one of those kits. So if it comes with a, a lubricant and the seal, as I mentioned, uh, definitely put um, follow the instructions and put the lubricant in those kits, but in those kits only. All right. Uh, this washer here, uh, in the instructions it explains where to put it, but uh, where I mentioned before about the oil pump belt and how there's a small washer in front of the uh, where the gear is on the uh, crankshaft, this Molossi washer replaces that washer. It's just slightly thicker. Um, at just Molossi have worked out with the shaft length uh, of the Molossi variator. It needs uh, a small additional booster from the back to get it to be in the correct position. Uh, compared to the factory. So we're going to go ahead and pop this all in now and uh, hopefully it all starts to come together and make a little bit more sense. Now back at the scooter, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove that factory washer. Now as I mentioned, the only difference between them is the Molossi is a little bit thicker. So we're going to go ahead and pop that one on. Then we're going to put the starter pinion on because that can be a little bit painful to get on after the fact. So we've got our, our variator all assembled. Now we're just going to be really careful here because there are teeth in the ramp plate. It's going to be careful that we don't allow this to come apart as we put it on. We slide it on the end, gently yep, feed it until it lines up. Now what you want to do, don't push from the shaft because the shaft will push the ramp plate out the back. You want to hold the basket and, not, uh, and sort of pinch the shaft so that they both all move together like so. Now that we're ready to put the rear pulley and the belt on, I'll just show you that there is an easy way to do this. Now what you want to do, same as I showed you before, uh, to uh, push the belt down into the torque drop so you can get it off the variator shaft when you're removing the variator. We're going to do exactly the reverse when we put the belt back on. So usually, usually the way I do it is set the belt on. Now some belts are directional, some aren't. Uh, usually a good rule of thumb is when it's on the scooter, the Molossi logo should be readable to you in its, in its normal direction. Uh, that's the best way of doing it. But some belts are directional, some aren't. What we're going to do is see how that when I push the belt on there, it's sitting right on the very outside of the pulley. Now get your hand uh, on the inside there. Now remember, this wants to twist clockwise to undo. So I'm going to twist it and at the same time push the belt down. Now as this is a brand new belt, it's a little bit slippery, so you're going to want to pinch it off. But uh, you'll see now the belt's way down on the torque driver, which is going to give us a lot more slack at the front to get this around the variator and make it really easy to put the whole thing all on as one unit and not struggle with it on the bike. Okay, reassembly time. So I'm still holding that so it doesn't slip back up the torque driver. Slide that in and you'll see up the front at the variator we still have plenty of slack. Now I'm holding this slack here for the time being. Well, you can hold it is just by putting your finger around the belt at the back because what I, want, I, I don't want the belt to be way down on the shaft. And the reason for this, when you put off, when you put your outer pulley on, what you don't want to do is for the outer pulley to get caught against the belt and not actually squeeze up against the shaft because that's what it needs to do. So you can hear that metallic noise. That means it's it's actually hitting the end of the shaft and that's where it's stopping. What can happen is if the belt's all the way down against the shaft, it gets stuck against the belt and not the shaft, the outer pulley, and doesn't actually do up properly. You want metal against metal, not metal against rubber. Because if you don't do that, and you do the belt up, or you do the pulley up, sorry, against the belt, as soon as the bike starts moving, that pulley's gonna come loose and you're gonna have a disaster on your hands. So 
and be very careful about not doing that. So doing it one handed makes it a little bit, a little bit more difficult, but I'm just being careful to make sure that this little uh, starter gear here is sitting in the correct place on the fan and that we still have our washer in there, as you can see there. So I'm going to carefully place that in there. And now we're ready to put our nut on. And always, always, always do your nut up by hand first. This is a general practice with anything, but with something like this, it's uh, very important. So I'm just going to squeeze that belt in there again, just to make sure that our belt's flapping around nice and loosely and the nut is hand tight. So I know absolutely for certain that that belt is not binding up between those two. I can go ahead and pop our clutch bell on. Do the rear nut on. Now before I rattle these up, uh, all scooters have a factory torque spec for both of those nuts. Um, usually for most scooters it's between sort of 25 and 45 uh, or 25 and 35 for the front and 35 and 45 for the rear. Um, that's a general rule for most 50 cc's. Obviously the bigger the shaft, the higher the torque spec rating is going to be. Now the big danger with over tightening these is that you'll strip or snap either the crank uh, or the rear shaft. Now if you, if you strip or snap the crank you're in big trouble. That's, uh, that's a new crank. There's not really an easy way of repairing that. Um, hopefully if that happens it's the, it's the nut, usually not the crank, but a way of avoiding this is you always do them up hand tight, all the way up hand tight, and um, if you're using a cordless, uh, a cordless impact driver like we are, most of the modern ones, even the cheap ones, have a variable newton meter setting. So we're really familiar with this tool, so a pretty good idea uh, of exactly how much the nuts need to be done up, but if you're not, uh, just go carefully. Um, Usually the lowest rating on most sort of cheap ones is around a, see either 75 or 100 newton meters. Now keep in mind, uh, most of these manufacturers are pretty generous with that rating. So about 100 newton meters in real life is, if you held the gun there for a full minute at the 100 newton meter rating, it might get to about 85. So it's just about being sensible and having a bit of a feeling about it. Don't just set the gun to the highest setting and just you know hold it for 30 seconds. The nut needs to be tight enough not to come undone. <clears throat> You're not trying to do the wheel nuts up on the space shuttle. So it doesn't need to be some crazy high rating because uh, honestly a, a nut coming slightly loose uh, is going to make a bit of a rattle. It's probably going to alert you to the fact that there's a problem. You're probably going to pull over and check it out. If it snaps, you're stuffed. That's it. You're done. So just be sensible. There we go. That's pretty tight. There we go, nice and tight. All right, always a good idea before you start the bike, just to rotate the crank a few times to get the belt to come back up uh, into the back of the torque driver. And you see, because the belt is actually turning the same speed on both, that's all good to go. Now in the process of tuning the bike, you're probably gonna have the variator apart a few times changing the weight of the rollers. So a really good idea, which I didn't do at the start, and we usually recommend, is to put some pen marks from the top of uh, the, um, the face of the variator down to the bottom. Just put a number of them around. Now the idea of this, what's going to happen is uh, as the variator goes, uh, uh, operates, it's going to wipe off those marks. Now if you take the bike for a decent test ride, check its full top speed, what you're wanting to happen is for the belt to go all the way up to probably one to two millimeters away from the very top of the face. That means that it's doing its job, that the rollers aren't too light, that it's operating properly, and you're getting the maximum ability from the variator. Now what will happen is obviously that the marks will wear off and will give you a really clear indication of where the belt's getting to. Just a really cheap and, uh, and simple trick of um, helping you get the best out of your variator. Now you may think, oh, we're done. Well, we've only done half the job. Now we actually have to tune the parts that we've put in. So at this point, you could put the rest of the plastics back on, but there's a 99% chance that you're going to need to do more roller tuning, which is really where you know, the majority of your transmission tuning is, is with the rollers. So I'd normally recommend not putting the plastics back on until you've got the transmission absolutely spot on. Now transmission tuning is one of those things, you can't really go wrong per se, it's just either better or worse performance. You can put a really heavy set in, it's way too heavy, 
and it will just perform worse. It can't actually damage the transmission or the scooter to have rollers that are too heavy. And the same is true when it's too light. If your rollers are too light, the bike's just going to rev really hard and not really move. So, but it's not going to damage the bike to try that. So I would highly recommend if you're not super experienced with scooter tuning, try a big variation of rollers. It's a good idea to learn what it feels like, how the bike responds when the rollers are too light. And the same as when they're too heavy. What does it feel like? You know, you go for a test ride, you pull out of a corner, the bike bogs. You really get that strong sense on the bike of what it feels like when there's a, when there's a particular issue. And this is really going to help you because if you start again with another build or you put a friend's bike together or maybe you, you know someone who's experiencing a similar problem, you ride their bike because you know how that feels to have rollers that are too heavy or too light, it'll really help you to diagnose problems further on down the track. Because when you're tuning, really you're diagnosing problems. If the bike's not riding right, it's not performing properly, it means there's a tuning problem. It means uh, there's a, a bottleneck somewhere um, either in the engine uh, or in the tuning. And you need to try and find that bottleneck, it's problem solving. So the more experience you can give yourself by exposing yourself to different types of tuning problems and scenarios, the quicker and better you're gonna get at scooter tuning. Now along those lines, we've got these really great little Polini roller tuning kits. Now these things are particularly ingenious because they're around the price of uh, one and a half, uh, less than two Molossi roller kits. But the way that they work, instead of uh, one roller being a set weight, and if you want to change the weight, you have to change the whole roller, they utilize these little roller shells with individual weights, which can be interchanged from the shell. So this kit here is a five and a half to seven gram kit. They come in different uh, weight kits. They come in a heavier kit than this and a lighter kit for the Piaggio. But um, this one here is five and a half gram, six, six and a half, and seven gram. So this one here being a six and a half, that's now a six and a half gram roller. So say I pop that in the bike, oh, it's too heavy, I need to go lighter. All I, all I do is exchange the weighted component from the shell with a lighter weighted component. So now I wanna try the sixes. There we go, pop it in. And now it's a six gram roller. It's uh, really quite an ingenious way of, um, of saving yourself some money and giving yourself a really wide range of tunability straight away. Look, uh, hopefully that was useful, guys. Thank you for watching. Look, um, even if you don't have a Piaggio Zip, maybe you have a different model of Piaggio, or maybe you don't have a Piaggio at all. Pretty much everything we've discussed in this video is applicable to most 50cc scooters, with pretty rare exceptions. So the best thing you can do if you want to learn about transmission tuning is just give it a go. Put a, put a variator in your scooter, change your rollers, muck around with the clutch. As long as you follow some of those key rules, um, you can't really go into trouble, because uh, scooter tuning's fun and it's cheap, so, which makes it even more fun. If you have any questions, guys, please, uh, please let us know in the comments. We are uh, endeavor to answer every single question, and uh, thanks again for watching.